Hi, this is Lou from YA Strength, and there's been a lot of interest in intermittent fasting over the past couple of years, and even if you're new to it or if you've been doing it for a few years, people want to know exactly what happens inside the body when you're intermittent fast. Many studies have shown that intermittent fasting is known to lower insulin levels, enhance recovery and reduce inflammation, boost your metabolism, increase fat burning, and help with cell rejuvenation. But seeing those benefits alone doesn't really help with painting the picture with regard to what actually happens inside the body when you intermittent fasting. Plus, some people intermittent fast for 12 hours, some do it for 18, some do it for less than that. So it's different responses for everyone. And not only are the responses slightly different based on the person and their body type, the question becomes, at what point in fasting length do certain benefits occur? Like when do I begin fat burning? When do when does keto begin? When does I see the the um the the cell rejuvenation period starts happening? So when do these benefits occur based on the fasting length? In this video, I'm gonna discuss that and tell you about the different phases and intermittent fasting from the minute you finish eating or from the minute that you're finished taking your last bite to up to four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 14, 18, and up to 20 hours after you have begun fasting. I'm gonna tell you about what happens inside your body once you begin fasting and specifically how it happens broken down by the hour. Right after you ate your last meal, your body begins your digestion process. So all of the carbohydrates that you consumed is being changed or pushed out into your bloodstream as sugar, or in scientific terms, glucose. And that process causes your blood sugar to rise, in turn causing higher blood sugar levels, and then your body produces insulin. And the purpose of insulin is to stimulate the absorption of your body when it comes to absorbing glucose or sugar into the tissue or into the organs, into the body to turn it into energy. So that happens right after you eat, every single time after you eat. Now, insulin also does one more thing. It stores the extra energy. So many a times us, you know, being who we are, we oftentimes eat too much carbs or too many carbs. So we have a lot of pizza, we have a lot of uh, pasta and your body doesn't really need all of that energy all at once so it stores the excess energy into the body after it's done turning those carbs into energy um, and you have the excess energy what it's doing is it's storing the excess energy into glycogen which is how your body stores the excess energy that is produced from the overabundance of carbs that we all typically eat so what happens to that glycogen? Well, it's stored in your body and it's saved for when you're ready to use it. But guess what? Even the glycogen stores can become full in your body. And what happens when that becomes full? Well, your body then turns that excess glycogen into fat. And that's how you all start developing your fat stores. So all of that happens zero to four hours after you eat. So immediately after you have your first meal, that process begins. So about four hours or so after your last meal, your blood level begins to settle down and the excess stores of, of sugar in your bloodstream begins to dwindle away as they all become absorbed and everything gets back down settled and back to normal. But your insulin is still at work. So as long as there's blood sugar in your, in your um, bloodstream, uh, although it's been lowered, it's still in your bloodstream. So as long as it's in there, insulin will continually work to change that into energy. So that takes some time to occur. During this time, although you're storing your excess glycogen as, as, as fat stores, fat is still not being used for energy yet. But as insulin drops and it stops converting energy from the sugar, your body will then eventually begin to um, use the glycogen in your body, finally. And it is at that point where your body will start, will start using fat for energy as opposed to using glycogen 
for energy. But again, that takes time and that is not happening yet, but this is just what happens um, during that process, if that makes sense. And I'll definitely let you know exactly when this process begins later in this video. After about eight or nine hours, your body will have fully digested all of the food in your system that you recently ate and the production of insulin should have come to a complete stop or should have fully ended by this time. And during this time, your body is actually able to rest for a brief period, very brief period. But after a while or a few minutes or a couple of hours or so, your body continually demands for energy. So your brain is still working, your organs are still working, although it's resting, everything is still working and demanding energy from certain resources. So at this point, that's when your body resorts to producing something called glucagon. So do you recall all that excess glycogen that was stored in your body after you had too much carbs? Well, glucagon helps to release all of those excess stores of glycogen from the body tissue back into the bloodstream for your uses of energy. So it releases all of the excess glycogen that was stored in your body back into the bloodstream so that way it can keep your blood sugars level. You don't want it to drop too low. Of course, well, at least your body doesn't want it to drop too low. So it manages that by releasing blood sugar or sugar back into your body as you need it. So as your body taps into that energy that the glucagon was able to cause your body to release into your bloodstream, that eventually begins to get depleted. And at that point, your body begins to, I guess, stress, but in a good way, in a way that it forces your body to look for alternate resources. And guess what's next in line? After your glycogen has been fully completed, the next thing that's in line are your fat stores. But it doesn't happen just that easily. To kick this process off, your body releases a bunch of hormones to help initiate the fat burning process within your body. And these hormones include testosterone, human growth hormone, IGF-1, which is like an insulin type of growth hormone, something called T3, adrenaline, and more glucagon. And all that happens between eight to 12 hours after your fast or after you had your last meal. So after about 12 to 16 hours since you begin fasting or since you last had your last meal, your body goes in a full throttle. And those fat burning hormones are working extra hard. And your liver begins to release something called ketones as a result. Ketones are fatty acid molecules that get produced after your body breaks down fat or fat cells. During this time, your body loves ketones because it produces energy for your vital organs, your brain, your heart, and every need or resource currently that's needed within your body. And ketone production increases more and more the longer that you fast. And you might notice that you feel very focused, zoned in, and productive during this time. It's because your ketones also helps in new cells from your brain's stem cells. And it also strengthens your intellectual capacity. After about 16 to 18 hours, autophagy begins. Auto means self and phagy means eat. So the literal meaning of autophagy is self-eating, but not in a bad way. Autophagy is the body's way of cleaning itself out. So what it does is it re replaces the bad, old, and beaten up cells with new, fresh, and cleaner cells. Or it recycles damaged older cells and replaces them with newly recycled and renewed cells. This can make your cells more efficient and last longer. And there are some studies that show that autophagy can start even sooner, like around the 14 hour mark. As you can see, there's a lot that goes on within the body during the fasting process. And it's good to know exactly what is happening while you're on your intermittent fasting journey. So I encourage all of you to continue learning about intermittent fasting and the best practice approaches that you can take when it comes to fasting and how to accomplish your goals, whether it be weight loss or whether it be simply to be healthier, fasting can help with that. The more that you know about fasting, the better that you'll enjoy the actual process. So take time to do your research and continue to watch videos such as mine. I hope you found this video helpful and informative.